There we go. Well, as, as most people know that have gotten to do the, uh, the talks for the service, um, it's an honor to be up here in front of everybody to share uh, what we've learned and, and what we can learn. And we all know, too, that usually this doesn't come to you right away. <laughs> I was uh, told about this, or uh, asked about it, on Tuesday through an email, and of course, 7.30 this morning, and I was right. So it's, it's just been one of those days. Uh, I'm just going to kind of mix it up a bit. I don't usually read a lot of stuff, but uh, I had an email sent to me a while back, and uh, it came at came into play here just recently for me. I got it about six months ago from a friend. And uh, I'd like to read it to you first and then carry on from there with uh, my feelings. And, uh, and these are just my feelings. It's not the way you have to do things. It's the way it's worked for me. So the uh, email was called A Reflection on the Present. And it starts out, two men both seriously all occupied the same hospital room. One man was allowed to sit up in his bed for an hour each afternoon to help drain the fluid from his lungs. His bed was next to the, only, the room's only window. The other man had to spend all his time flat on his back. The men talked for hours on end. They spoke of their wives and families, their homes, their jobs, their involvement in the military service, and uh, where they had been on vacations. Every afternoon when the man in the bed by the window could sit up, he would pass the time by describing to his roommate all the things he could see out the window. <clears throat> the man in the other bed began to live for those one-hour periods where his world would be broadened and enlivened by all the activity and color of the world outside. The window overlooked a park with a lovely lake. Ducks and swans <coughs> played on the water while children sailed their model boats. Young lovers walked arm in arm with flowers of every color, and a fine view of the city skyline could be seen in the distance. As the man by the window described all this in exquisite details, the man on the other side of the room would close his eyes and imagine, imagine this picturesque scene. One warm afternoon, the man by the window described a parade passing by. Although the other man could not hear the band, he could see it in his mind's eye as the man by the window portrayed it with descriptive words. Days, weeks, and months passed by. One morning, the day nurse arrived to bring water for their baths, only to find the lifeless body of the man by the window, who had died peacefully in his sleep. <clears throat> she was saddened and called the hospital attendants to take the body away. As soon as it seemed appropriate, the other man asked if he could be moved next to the window. The nurse was happy to make the switch, and after making sure he was comfortable, she left him alone. Slowly and painfully, he propped himself up on one elbow to take a look, his first real look at the world outside. He strained to slowly turn to look out the window beside the bed. It faced a blank wall. The man asked the nurse what would have compelled his deceased roommate, who had described such wonderful things outside this window. The nurse responded that the man was blind and could not even see the wall. She said, perhaps he just wanted to encourage you, which I, I thought that was uh, tremendous happiness in making others happy, despite our own situations. Shared grief is half the sorrow, but happiness when shared is double, which I thought was very, very well said. Um, and it also said, if you want to feel rich, just count all the things you have that money can't buy. So today is a gift. And that is why they call it the present. And I thought that was a very appropriate 
email. Thank you, Casper, for sending that. Even though it was six months ago, <laughs> it uh, came into play just recently for myself. And uh, I'll explain why as I go through my, my uh, written part here. Uh, three years ago, I came to this foundation. <clears throat> as I always joke about it at uh, meditations and whatnot, kicking and screaming. <laughs> <clears throat> but that couldn't be farther from the truth. What I found here when I entered the doors was acceptance from a group of people I didn't even know. Um, I guess I'd always looked for that. And, uh, wow. That's pretty funny. Love you, Steve, man. It's all right. Thank you, Brian. Okay. Whew. Enough of that. Okay. With the help and guidance of many here, which there are very many, those who are mediums, those who are teachers, and even those who are just friends, they've uh, helped me to learn to accept myself. turn I've been able to uh, better my situation and do what I know I need to do by helping others find their way as I did. I have learned to speak from my heart and uh, share my experiences. To understand the things around me. Those I cannot change and those I can. To lead a more fulfilling productive life. I have learned what love is and how to share it. I'm not perfect and I'm definitely a work in progress. I think we all could relate to that. I still sometimes let others indirectly influence my thinking. I've run into this a few times with people who have approached me asking for advice. And it's usually through what other people say and what they think that we allow ourselves to get off our path slightly. Um, <clears throat> so it does take me briefly off my path in the wrong direction because I believe these things to be true. But I also understand that they're not true because I have, in, I have gained insight through meditation, healing, and of course the Sunday service on what's my reality and where I need to be. So that helps me get back to where I belong. I'm able to disregard those things that I've been told and come back to my path very quickly. There are those people in our lives who don't understand and will try to discourage us and from what we know to be right. But we just need to believe in our hearts that this is who I am, where I need to be, and what I must do. And those people are on their own journeys. And that's, uh, that's all I wrote, but I'd like to continue on with that because I know there are, I have friends who don't come because their significant other or whatever doesn't trust in what this is all about and thinks it's hokey. Well, that's been an ongoing thing for many, many years with, with spiritualism, from the burnings and the hangings as witches and whatnot, and uh, people, what they don't understand, they're afraid of. Um, 
I explained to a girl last night who's going through a situation that uh, she told me, she said, I will be there if my husband allows it. I said, if people would just realize to allow people to be themselves and do what they need to do, if you feel you need to be here to get that guidance and that help, they, they need to realize that what you gain from your experience is here in dealing with the people in the foundation, through the classes, through the meditations and all, their life will benefit greatly too from it. But they just don't see that. And it's a shame that we have so many people that want to uh, stand in our way to do what we know is right. These people will show when they can, I know that. And, you know, when, when we all need to come in and talk to people who share what we, what we believe and we need that confirmation that we are in the right place doing the right thing. The whole goal with me getting involved with this is that of helping people. That's the most important thing. A lot of people think that because as mediums we do this and we charge money and this and that, that's not the case. There are people out there that we many, many times help without asking for anything in return. And that's, that's what makes your heart grow, is to see that you put somebody on the proper path they need to be on. Um, that in itself is a gift. Never mind the gift of being able to hear or see spirit or, or any of that. It's just to be able to advise people to help them on their journeys. And uh, that's all it takes. It's, it's not about the money. If it was about the money, we're all doing it for the wrong reason anyway. So, um, I just feel blessed to, to have come here. This has changed my life so much. So, so much. People have, have come up to me that I've known for years and said that in the last three years they've, I, I'm a totally different person. And you know, that's not a bad thing, I guess. <laughs> with, the, with the past I've had, I mean, it's, uh, it's actually quite a pat on the back. So it, it's nice to be able to have a pat on the back from somebody other than yourself. It's, dislocate a shoulder. <laughs> but uh, it's just nice to know that you're doing the right thing. You know, this is where where I feel I have to be. And I am going to continue on. I've never stuck with anything in my life. It's been like, you know, a couple months here, a couple months there. But this is kind of, just kind of draws you in because you do start seeing changes. Happy changes. Um, as far as money goes, I know I'm never going to be rich, but I'm comfortable with what I have. And that's where that statement came in, just count the things that money can't buy. That's the blessings you have. And the thing, I go back to what Barb said last week in her talk, kind of stuck with me about sharing a smile or helping somebody else out around you. That's what it's all about. We need to get away from this, you know, what am, what am I, what do I get out of this? You know, don't do things because you feel you should get something in return. Do it because you want to. That'll make you feel so much better and change your life so, so much. I mean, I work in a factory and, uh, you know, you have your mindset of the factory, but I still carry this in there too, and that's what keeps me going daily. I mean, I used to... The, the one guy that's my supervisor says to me, don't take it personally when he says something to me. And I'm like, well, I don't. You know, that's just uh, the whole thing about this. I've stopped taking things personally. I just realize now that people say the things they do because it's the way they are. It's not the way I am. So in order to keep progressing, you know, just keep those positive thoughts and let that, uh, you know, the bad energy, wa you know, wash off your back and, and uh, continue on because I know I'm going to be something. I knew that all my life. I didn't realize it until I came here, though. That's the, that's the whole and the best part about it all. This is what opened my eyes. Um, I get away from the, the dogmas of regular religion and whatnot. 
it's nice to come here dressed in my dress pants, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just the, the, the feeling you get to know you can be yourself when you're here. That you're not... Nobody's telling you to do anything. Like I said earlier, what you choose to do with your life is entirely up to you. But it sure helps to have a lot of people like this around you to keep you go in the right direction and give you advice from their experiences. And of course the odd medium, you know, it doesn't hurt to talk to them. You know, we need help just as much as anybody else, probably sometimes more, to understand our life. But um, I, I just feel now that I'm probably rambling a little bit, so <laughs> I am going to uh, thank you for allowing me to share. Um, this is a great experience for those students that eventually will be up here. I hope to see video of your, your talks and, and to enjoy what you have to share with other people. The thing is not to keep it inside, it's to let it out and let people know the way life really is when you do feel that love and you know you can help people. So I have to say thank you for allowing me to share again and God bless.